Hey guys, Marcello here. Today we're gonna be doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. More countries are now looking to restrict their exports and this week we have news from india in regards to wheat elon musk secures reportedly 10 billion dollars to reduce his loans that he has to take out to be able to buy twitter one of the things i thought was really interesting as well with uh with elon musk is that he went to the 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 met gala you know another fancy party for the stars and on the back of his shirt was wo uh, woven in new world order in latin which i thought was pretty interesting and all of the markets crash after a lot of volatility after the fed decides to increase rates so go ahead and get started Biggest news of the news this week was that the Fed, which is the central bank in the United States, decided to go ahead and raise interest rates by 50 basis points, which means 50 cents. This is the first time in 22 years that they decided to actually raise rates. It's the single biggest meeting increase in 22 years. So this causes a lot of, there was a lot of volatility. At first, the markets just slammed to the upside. And then after that, they slammed right back down. So overall, the US markets in Canada also were negative for the week. Week. The Nasdaq officially had its worst month since April, its worst month in April, meaning the results from April from the Nasdaq were the worst since 2008. And the increase in the interest rates is, is something that's extremely important because the interest rate dictate how consumers behave. Now, they, this means buying uh, houses. This means even rents. It means buying cars. And the consumer is about 70, almost 70% 70 of the economy in the United States. Remember, I always give this lesson to you guys with the majority of industrialized countries, which means most countries outside of Africa and then most of the countries in Asia, except for a huge a fanful, a few handful, tongue twister, are relying on consumer spending. So when interest rates go up, people buy less things because the cost of borrowing money goes a lot higher. I know your credit cards, for example, for us in the United States, most credit cards are variable rates. So the amount of money that we have that we borrowed to buy stuff that we don't need Essentially, the cost of those items of that debt goes up because the interest rate goes up then the interest rates on the credit card goes up. And then that means that we start to pay 50, 100, 200, 300 dollars more. Just to give you an idea, for example, one of the properties that I have, I did a refinance. I believe if I was in, in November of 2021, if I were to take the same loan today compared to the loan that I took in November 2021, it would be a five hundred dollar increase in what I would have to pay today because the interest have gone up so much, right? So this is really big because this is gonna hurt the overall economy and obviously if we hit a recession, that's bad for everybody. Overseas market news, the Euro stocks was the biggest loser in Europe. Most other markets were negative as well. Latin American markets were also lower, Mexico being the biggest loser there. Far East, we have the Africa and Middle Eastern markets. South Africa, biggest loser in the Middle East and Africa, while Nigeria was the biggest winner, at just over 2.6%. And then in the far, far East, we have Asia and Australian markets. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong was the biggest loser overall. Bitcoin and crypto news, not a huge, huge pile of news. Most of the Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other markets went down with the stock market this week. Bitcoin was down 7.97% at just under 39,000. It's down 22.63% for 2022. Obviously, that for Bitcoin is literally like a day of movement, right? But it's still extremely volatile. Gucci, the stores and select stores have decided to start accepting crypto payments. So if you want to go and spend some of your Bitcoin gains, you can now get Gucci purses and all kind of Gucci items with crypto. Also, it's been reported that the volume of NFTs has collapsed 92% from its high. I believe the... Um, the peak was about seven weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, when we saw the peak and it started coming down quite heavily. Commodities this week, including food, wheat futures have gone up 3% this week as India talked about possible restrictions from its wheat. The U.S. is having its worst wheat crop since 1989, and China is having its worst wheat crop on record ever. One of the people that I follow, which is 
let's call them really in tune with the whole food situation and the 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 hunger games that we're gonna approach very soon. It's not funny because I'm you know I'm smiling, but please prepare yourself. The preppers were right. He says that we should watch wheat because it's a pro to pro tends a lot of the food prices, which basically not predicts, but it's kind of a leading indicator of that. And more broadly, it leads into geopolitical instability. So if the food prices continue to explode, a lot of the countries that have to import food, there's going to be a lot of unrest because if people are hungry and there's nothing to eat, then obviously they're going to go and riot on the street. Germany is claiming that they're making process to wean off Russian oil and fossil fuels. All fossil fuels. There was an economic and climate minister named Robert Habeck that says that they've decreased it already significantly, but obviously they're under strong pressures due to the sanctions and what happens with the war in Ukraine to completely cut off their imports from Russia, which is something that they're working on. Remember, the United States is still paying for Russian oil as well. So we're literally financing the war in Ukraine. So don't let the government bureaucrats tell you about how we're putting sanctions on the country because we're literally still giving them money for oil when we could be paying, for example, Canada for it. But, you know, government policy. Oil overall for the week is at a three week high. Obviously, if we have a situation where they stop buying Russian oil, that puts a really high demand on the rest of the oil around the world because Russia is a big exporter and producer of oil. And also the the corn, I was going to say it in Spanish, cuarentena, just in case you're wondering how to say quarantine in Spanish, because I always do the Spanish videos first. They, the lockdowns that we have in China and Shanghai, they're literally putting fences around people's buildings. And that's, I think, what they want to do to all of us. So just keep that in mind. The preppers are right. The gold precious metals market went down 0.72%. Silver also collapsed 1.82% and went to about $22 and change. Financial and banking news. I let you guys know about Elon Musk kind of hinting towards the new world order with the jacket that he had at the Met Gala and also that he had reportedly $10 billion committed from equity investors for his purchase of Twitter. You guys will probably see the jacket there in the pictures. Bonds are falling around the world as investors brace for the biggest U.S. rate hike since the 2000. They're still expecting a lot more rate hikes for the rest of the year after the meetings as well due to the inflation rates. And we also have other banks around the world unprecedentedly increasing rates as well. We have Austria, Austria, no, Australia, India, and Bank of England all deciding to raise rates this week as well. Political news, U.S. Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe versus Wade and plant Parenthood versus Casey, according to a leaked opinion. It's actually a historic event due to the fact that it's the first time that a opinion or a decision from the Supreme Court is actually leaked to the public. In economic news, China's factory activity contracted for the for a steeper pace in April, again, due to the whole situation with the lockdowns, it's a second consecutive consecutive month of declines, which basically means that the second economy, largest economy in the world is starting to show a little bit of chinks in its armor, pun intended. U.S. Labor Department on Thursday said that 19,000 more Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week, but the total number of co people collecting jobless claims is at the lowest level for 50 years, and the U.S. economy continued to add jobs at a rapid pace this month, but, 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 remember I always told you guys don't pay attention to what they say, pay attention to what they do. Even as employers are struggling with a shortage of workers and demands, the amount of workers, the labor participation rate, people actually working as a percentage of the population is actually lower than when the pandemic was here before the pandemic. So the amount of people working now as a percentage of the population is literally lower now than it was before the pandemic. And that causes a really bad problem due to the fact something is biting me. I don't know what it is. The There's something that's really important with this in that if there's still a record number of jobs available and work and, and companies are still having a problem finding workers, they have to offer more money to get these workers. They have to offer more money for these workers. The majority of the budget of a company one of the top expenses is literally labor. So if they have to pay people more, the costs are continuing to rise. And that's part of the reason why there's upward pressure on inflation, which means that it's still not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Corporate news. Musk is expected to be the temporary Twitter CEO after he gains control of the company. He also talked about the fact that he's going to fire about a thousand people. 
That's might be why they're complaining so much at Twitter. Shares of Netflix jumped 4.78% after they announced cost-cutting measures after a very disappointing quarter one. And Meta Platforms, which is the parent company of Facebook, they surged 5.32% after investors, investors, <laughs> I, always, I always mess up the English video because I do the Spanish videos first. Their shares surged due to rising opti- optimism uh, from the, the stock as a whole, even though they their stock has crashed 37% in 2022. Trade news, U.S. Commerce Department is saying that the trade deficit widened in March to a record $351.5 billion. The trade de- de- deficit or surplus basically means that we are importing a ton more items than we are exporting, which isn't good for a country because we're running at a deficit. A deficit means if you spend way too much money on your credit card compared to the amount of money you make, eventually you're going to go bankrupt. And that's what's going to happen to the U.S. soon. Indoor exercise company Peloton announced that it's selling a major stake in the firm because now that nobody has to stay home anymore, no one cares about having a bicycle at their house. In technology, new development in superconductors. This is actually extremely cool. A new development in superconductors can make electronics a thousand or excuse me, hundreds of times faster without energy loss. An associate professor and their research group at the Delphi University of Technology in the, in the Netherlands discovered a one-way superconductive uh, metals and superconductivity in general without magnetic fields. They were discovered in 1911, but it was thought to be impossible. So now this paves a way for superconducting computing, which means that Every, you know, computers, cars, absolutely everything can get a lot faster without any negative aspects to it. And another thing that's really interesting as well, MIT researchers developed a portable suitcase to be able to desalinate water with just a one button on an off switch. Weighing less than 10 kilos, which is about 22 pounds, they literally can carry it around and the amount of energy that it uses is literally the same as a cell phone charger. So you can literally buy a solar energy plant or solar panels from the internet at 50 bucks, for example, and you would be able to power this desalination plant, which is amazing because there's still a lot of people in the world that don't have clean running water. Investment news, according to an April report from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, for the first time ever in 2021, there was $2 trillion that was spending on military which is not a good thing because obviously more country spending on the military means more possible conflicts, which means more possibility for war. Top five spenders are the United States, China, India, Russia, and the UK, which account for 62.5% of all the arms that were spent out of the 195 nations. Berkshire Hathaway, which is the company from Warren Buffett, decided to start buying stock again. They spent $7 billion buying Occidental Petroleum stock. And if Warren Buffett is buying fossil fuel stock, that means that fossil fuels aren't going anywhere for a while. He noted that at the meeting, he was able to buy 14% of the entire company in about a two week period. And in international events, Spanish officials said that the cell phones of the prime minister and the defense minister were infected in 2021 with a spyware software called Pegasus, which is only available for governments. They referred the case to the national court for further investigation, but who would want to investigate the Spanish government? And in unusual facts this week, the world's largest blue diamond at 15.10 carats called De Beers Cullinan Blue sold at an auction for $57.5 million after an eight minning eight minute bidding war from four buyers. If you have $60 million lying around, go buy an oversized diamond that you don't need to. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care of yourself because the preppers were right. We'll see you next week.